for week eight in our content this week and looking at horsemanship, I'm going to use a little bit of a different approach. I don't want to recreate the wheel, so I've found an individual um, on YouTube that has a couple of posts that I think do a really, really good job of overviewing um, a couple of considerations and control that directly um, flow from content that we covered last week. <clears throat> so I'm going to link a couple of those videos and use those for um, portions of our lecture this week. Additionally, I'm going to change the layout um, this week because in looking at YouTube and seeing the number of views um, on the videos, it appears that not everyone's watching the lectures. Um, some of the answers that I'm getting on the assignments, it also appears that maybe we're not all watching um, the videos or Googling answers. I understand that the class layout is unique. I understand that courses are running very differently because of COVID. Um, I understand that Cresta and I are tag teaming the class, but it's important that you're putting in your time and honest effort in all the courses that you're taking. Um, so I'm just going to do a little bit of a different approach this week, switch it up a little bit, um, give you the opportunity to receive instruction um, from a professional within the industry. Um, so that's kind of the reason for the switch up this week. So keep that in mind as we'll follow a little bit of a different format in our lecture content this week. So like I said, I'm going to use um, a couple of videos from a YouTuber, um, and there are three different videos that I will link. This PowerPoint is more just to explain how lecture will be set up this week, um, why it's set up that way, and why I think it will be beneficial to you. Um, so the three different videos I'm going to link is how to steer your horse. I know we went over the, the basics of that last week, and um, just the very basics of making sure that you use your legs and also um, using your hands to steer, that we're not totally steering with our reins, um, that we're also using some of our other cues. And watching um, her video, you will see that there's um, a lot of ways that our seat and how we set and how our horsemanship is that affects um, the amount of control we have on our horse and being able to steer and get them to perform the way we want them to. Um, and then all of all of the different components and cues and ways that we can communicate with our horse there. Um, I'm also going to tag a video of how to stop a horse with your seat. So we talked about um, pulling and releasing and saying whoa. Um, so pulling with your reins, so pull back lightly and then releasing. And then also um, the vocals of saying whoa to our horses to get them to stop. Um, so then this video is going to provide you additional information on different cues that we provide our horse with um, and how working with our horse continuously we can improve our stop. Um, even some of the things she talks about, I know she is writing English, um, they're going to cross over at this level <clears throat> to English and Western, but a lot of the, the topics that she discusses, um, even myself as I ride reiners, when you talk about how we ask our horses to stop to do our sliding stop, a lot of these basics are things that um, individuals overlook, and if we take it back to these basics, we can improve significantly on our current riding abilities. So keep that in mind if you are more of an advanced rider, that sometimes returning back to the basics is going to help our performance, um, whether it's horses you're riding in class or your performance and going home and applying these concepts to your horses at home. And then the third video is beginner horse riding mistakes, and it's the top 10. Um, the reason that I like this, I don't like to focus on the negatives a lot, but the reason that I like this video is she talks about the negatives. So I know last week we talked about, you know, making sure that you ride with your heels down and that your toes are pointing um, forward. And she talks more about, you know, the first um, mistake that a lot of beginner riders make is they want to not drop their heels. They want to drop their toes. And she talks about why that gives beginner riders oftentimes a feel of comfort and how to correct it and why it's important that we ride with our heels down, how it gives us a more secure seat and so on and so forth. So normally I don't like to look at the negatives, but she takes those negatives, explains why um, sometimes beginner riders want to do that and then why it's important to do it the correct way. Um, I know that we haven't talked a lot about 
um, horsemanship from the aspect of how you should um, set in the saddle and how you should be riding. So keep in mind this is, that this is a introduction into that. Um, most of these videos focus on why it's important that you are in the correct form because it assists you in being able to control your horse. And so I want to focus on it from that aspect at this point since we said, you know, the, the next um, three or four weeks we're going to focus on more of control and then the second half of our horsemanship will focus more on rider form. So keep that in mind when you're watching these videos that the rider form portion that is being mentioned now is important because it assists you in being able to control your horse um, correctly and more effectively. Um, in watching those three videos I will have an assignment but again it's not going to be the same layout um, that we followed to this point in the course. So for the assignment this week, um, I'll do what I normally do. I'll have a Word document and then you'll need to fill it in. Because um, I'm not posting a notes outline, um, I'm just posting the links to the videos I want you to watch. For your assignment, essentially if you complete the assignment, you will have a good outline of notes for what you've watched. It's going to be essential that you're watching these videos in detail and taking notes. So, for example, um, when you watch the beginner horse riding mistakes top 10, I'll list the top 10. And then what I want you to do is the, co the correct way, list the correct way of um, riding relating to, to that topic, and then um, explain why it is important. Um, the other two, I'll make a similar question um, and want you to fill that out. So it's going to be essential that you're watching these videos, that you're intaking that information, um, and that you're outlining it effectively. Then for your class time this week, um, it'll be similar to last week, and then you can practice making sure that you're using those additional cues in um, steering and stopping your horse. For individuals um, that have ridden before, um, that you're ready to add a little bit of speed to your riding, um, everything that is covered in these videos, I know that she talks about it at the walk, um, when she's steering, when she's stopping, and when she's explaining um, those top 10 mistakes that a lot of riders make. But all of this information applies at the walk, at the trot, and at the canter, um, or the walk. Um, the jog, and the lope. So no matter what speed you're performing at, all of these come into play. Um, so we'll keep that in mind this week, um, and then Cresta may ask some of you all um, to, to ride um, with additional speed, and then also may have um, some obstacles per se to um, maneuver around throughout the class. And then um, for next week, we'll see how, how this assignment goes this week, um, how you all do with that. And I know sometimes it's hard, to, hard for me to gauge um, since I'm doing the online component. Um, so I'll talk to Cresta a little bit and see how we're doing. And then I'll make a decision um, on how the layout will continue moving forward next week. So thank you guys so much.